We're here today with Chris Cuomo, anchor of the new CNN Morning Show, New Day. Thanks for having us, Chris. Pleasure. So are you a morning person? I am now. <laughs> what are the, some of the unique things that go into having a morning show? Well, it's very early, mm -hmm. and that sounds simple, but it really is all-encompassing. Uh, the time becomes a big function of the job, no matter how you look at it. Personally, it's really taxing. Uh, I got young kids and a wife, so it's a little bit family friendly, but you have to get up super early. It's really almost like a night job. What you're time up do at you like, get up? You know, 3, 3.30, wow. depends on what's going on. Um, you have to get into the office, prepare, and you have to unnaturally be at your best when you should be at your worst, you know, right. uh, in those early morning hours. So that's a part of it. Uh, but also there's the urgency. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it's about the first thing that people will watch in the morning, you hope, that changes the job also fundamentally from when you're in different day parts, when there's a, such a proliferation of information, so many different outlets and platforms. Morning TV is still one of the more unique appointment viewing uh, outposts for television, so morning plays a role there also. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship to your co-hosts, like how are you like or unlike them? Uh, I am unlike them in that they are better than me at most things. I am much more attractive uh, than <laughs> either of my co-hosts, and they freely acknowledge that. Uh, they just did. They just walked by a second ago and said, make sure that you acknowledge that he's much better looking. But when it comes to the actual job and the talents that it takes, uh, they're very talented. Um, we all come from different places. There's a very nice complementary aspect to the team. And I think that that's nice because it gives you, even though I've traveled this entire country for many years, you know, been in every state, been all over the world, there's something about being from a place. And so we have really good regional aspects. And as a result, a lot of good mutual respect. And unlike a lot of other gigs I've had in television, we spend a lot of time together off camera, mm -hmm. you know, and that's good because it's tough to fake the funk. You know, broadcasters aren't really actors. We're getting to be more and more actors. A lot of the newer generation are better presenters than they are journalists, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, but, you know, it's very real what you see on TV because the friendships are real off. That's great. Um, I love the segment Good Stuff. You know, it's a really nice selection of like fun, interesting stories. What makes for a Good Stuff story? I like to think of it as uh, somebody who's completely ordinary mm -hmm. doing something that's extraordinary. And that thing is often not such a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's not like you have to save my life to be the good stuff. Often they're gestures that anyone could do uh, if they want to, if they're aware of it, if they see the value in it, and it makes a huge difference. You know, we had Pharrell the other day, um, Pharrell Williams. He's mm -hmm. a big deal, you know, yeah. he's got that weird hat. But you know, he's a, he's a phenomenal maker of music on many levels. Somebody reaches out to him and says, hey, you know, this kid's going through a really hard time and he thinks your song, Happy, is like the best thing ever. And you know, he, he could get a lot of that and he could ignore it, which most people would, but he didn't. He decided to do something, make a video for the kid. That's an extraordinary person doing something extraordinary. But very often it's somebody's in trouble or there's need mm -hmm. and somebody else who's in their world decides to step up and help. Small way, big way, and that's cool. What's cool to me is that we do it at all. Mm -hmm. um, the good stuff was a struggle to get on television. Mm -hmm. Why? Because people say they want good news, but they don't watch it. Mm. They watch conflict and controversy, right. and they can blame the media all they want. That's an excuse. Uh, they gravitate, we gravitate towards the negative, mm -hmm. and it's a problem, and we see it in a lot of places. So getting the good stuff on was a challenge, and I'm, I'm so happy that it's become sponsored and popular. Yeah. It's a real validation of what I think is important in the business. And how do you find some of these untold people and stories? Well, that's the beauty. When you start doing it, if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. And we get them now uh, as much from enterprise reporting, you know, reaching out ourselves and figuring things out, as we do from people just sending them in. And that's the best when it starts this kind of collective idea or experience. You know, one of the most beautiful things you can have in television is where your audience feels ownership of the show and they start weighing in on what's on it. Good and bad, I love it all. You mm -hmm. know, it's one of the only values I see uh, to Twitter on a regular basis, which is it's great to get that immediate feedback. I just wish there was a little bit more intelligence into it sometimes, you know. Twitter, I think, has a tendency to make things more emotional uh, than intellectual. Is there a good stuff story that, like, really stays in your heart? You know, I mean, in truth, a lot of them do. Mm -hmm. they, they wouldn't make it uh, to air if I didn't feel that they resonated, uh, not just with me personally, but in general. I mean, I really believe that as heartrending as it is when somebody's in medical despair, especially when they're kids. I mean, that's, if you don't feel that, then you don't feel anything. But to me, it's when people have more garden variety pocketbook problems. I'm down on my luck. I'm not making enough money. I have trouble with my mortgage. 
and someone in your community recognizes that and helps you, and helps you out with a job, like the cop who busts this lady for shoplifting, but then when she learns her story, realizes that she's gonna help her, mm -hmm. and goes back and takes her own initiative on her own time, uh, that's real protect and serve. That really hits me when somebody does something to help somebody else, and it's not the most extreme need. Right. How about when it's less feel good? Like recently, you took um, Bill Donahue of the Catholic League um, to task on air in your show. Um, how do you make a point while you know not offending your your guests and resonating with viewers? Well, it's not easy. Yeah. Um, Bill Donahue. Uh, many of the interviews do not qualify as the good stuff. Uh, right. There's nothing good stuff about controversy, um, but you know, that's who I am. It's a big reason that I came to cable. I felt that I wasn't allowed uh, because of the exigencies of time and format and just what broadcast news was appealing to, to get into it with people. Even as the anchor of 2020, which is an awesome, in my opinion, the best long form show on television, um, I wasn't able to do it. And it motivated me to come here and work with Jeff Zucker because he said he wanted that. Mm -hmm. And for me, no one deserves a pass. What you have in cable TV right now and the media in general is people are taking sides. It has become the opinion of too many in the media that the game, especially in politics, is just where it is. It's left versus right. So you better buy into it because that's the way you make your money. So instead of testing both sides, which is harder, less appealing, more confusing to your audience because they have to think, right. just appeal to one and push it, push it, push it. And you now have two cable outlets who do exactly that. I don't care what their slogan is. So for us, the job's harder. And my motto is no one gets a pass. And when you sit in the chair, you're going to take responsibility for your ideas. I'm not here to argue against you. I'm here to test what it is that you're putting out to people. And even when it gets heated, that's not my persona. Mm -hmm. You can watch any of these interviews that I do. I'm not angry. I grew up in politics. Right. You're not going to make me angry because I know what motivates your position most of the time. So for me, it's engaging you, even if it's going to be confrontational without it being hostile. Mm -hmm. That's what I go for. Mm -hmm. And I think you got to see that even with Bill Donahue. As much as he finds my disagreement or questioning of him offensive, he didn't, I think, get offended. Right. So you mentioned you grew up in a political family. Yes. Your dad, um, Mario, was governor of New York and yes. so was your brother, Andrew. Um, what kinds of things have you learned from them? I've learned that politics, I've learned a lot, in, in truth. I've never had to look outside my family for male role models, mm -hmm. uh, which is a real blessing. Um, we're tight, the three of us. Yeah. We're all tight. I mean, I have three sisters, too. They're the smartest, most talented people in my family. Everybody knows that. The women are the real value <laughs> in the Cuomo family. The guys just talk a lot. But look, there's a love of service. Mm -hmm. uh, being in politics involves a privilege, and it involves a lot of sacrifice and you give up a lot in your personal life and you stress out your family a lot when mm -hmm. you put yourself in the public eye. Everybody else winds up being examined and they didn't ask for it. It's almost like what you get with service members families where they all wind up serving. Um, although I would argue at this point in our history, service members have a much higher calling than politicians these days. And that's another part of the lesson. It's an ugly game. Mm. Negativity is a proxy for insight. And by that I mean you taking a shot at me is valued more than you recognizing my good ideas, right. than you having good ideas of your own. And that is a toxic culture that is being allowed to grow, and it's a mistake. Politics is about money, politics is about influence, politics is about power. And right now, people in the game, people in politics are getting those things the wrong way. And we need a culture shift. It should start with the media, it should start with people who wanna do it differently when they get into office, and it's gotta start with people having had enough. And I learned all those lessons the hard way. Mm. And that's why I wouldn't go into politics. I don't think it's worth the sacrifice. Right. I love my brother. Um, and I also learned one other thing. The two parties, they're not so different. They're really not. They don't play the game that differently and they don't fight for things that are that different. They actually exacerbate, they exaggerate their own differences for their own causes. To me, it really comes down to the man or woman in the job. Mm. Why they're there, mm -hmm. what they believe in. Because the parties, at the end of the day, it's, they're both fighting for power. I heard one of the things that you like to do to maybe unplug from this world is fishing. Mm. Um, what are some of your favorite fishing spots? Oh, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough question. Now, now, you're, now you're coming at me. I wish I had favorite spots. That would yeah. mean that I was successful on a regular basis there. Yeah. To me, fishing is much more 
about getting away, um, being with my big brother, with my son, mm -hmm. uh, with my daughters, and uh, just having a good time. You know, catching is extra. Fishing, <laughs> I love. Catching is a bonus. Well, I think that's a great note to end on. Thank you so much for your time, Chris. It's a pleasure. And you can read the New Day magazine on Flipboard by just searching for New Day.